Hi, this is Dr. Graves from the California State University at Northridge Geography and Environmental Studies Department. This is a video tutorial designed to help you install the Citrix Workspace application, the Citrix app, on your device. I'm using um, Google Chrome right now. This should work with uh, Microsoft's browser and Firefox and very likely with the Apple products as well, but there may be tweaks. This is being recorded on September 6, 2022, and chances are that either my university or Citrix ex itself will throw away um, what they've done, start over, and I will be forced to film another one of these in another three days. But uh, let's cross our fingers that this one stays functional for a bit. So um, in uh, to search Google, type in Citrix Workspace, and uh, you should come to something like this. And the one that you're looking for at this point is the Citrix, if you're on a, a Windows machine or in um, uh, Chrome, you can um, use either of these. But the uh, kind of long way, but proper way to go is probably to go here, with the very first link, and click download from this first option here. Because I'm on a Windows machine, I need Citrix Workspace app for Windows. If you're on uh, a Mac or a Chromebook, um, or you're using just the Chrome browser on another thing, you may want to come down here. The instructions should look similar. So I'm clicking the Citrix Workspace app for Windows, and I want to download it. I'm downloading it in my download folder. Easy to find it there. Click Save and it uh, has a few seconds to download. And there it has completed the download. If you're using another browser, this um, download indicator may be up in a different corner, but for Chrome it's in the lower left. So I click that once, it says it's opening and it'll take a moment or two and then another window will appear prompting me to install the software. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Click yes. And uh, this dialog window appears. We want to click start and agree to accept the license by putting a check mark in the small box. Click Next. And we want to click Enable Single Sign-On. And that means it will remember the credentials for the device. Um, I'm not certain that this is absolutely necessary um, here at my university, but it may be elsewhere. Click Next enable the uh, app protection and click install. This process is longer than it used to be, but I believe that uh, the application is more safe from hacking than the old older products. The entire installation process took about a minute, maybe 90 seconds. If you click Add Account, then this window will appear. Now, I don't think you need to do anything with this. I believe that you can 
uh, cross this out. It may come a time when you need to enter the store and it's HTTPS colon whack whack my CSUN software dot CSUN dot edu. If you click continue, it will try to connect and it will ask you for your username, password, and a passcode. But at this point, the Citrix workspace is installed. So you can click cancel and then you get this unable to add account and you can just X this box out to remove it. Now open a new browser window or tab and type in my CSUN software and that will bring you to the my CSUN software page here at um, California State University Northridge. Click log in to my CSUN software and you should be prompted this is the sign on window for our university Please note this, that you do not have local storage, and so if you want to save your files, the university no longer uh, allows you to, to save your work to your university uh, system, but instead uh, you need to save it on your local C drive if you, or in a flash drive, um, a USB external drive. So I use my standard uh, login credentials and I click uh, log on. Of course, we have one of these uh, horrible duo push requirements. So I have to do that, find my phone and tell CSUN, yes, it's me. Do not update your password because this is not the password for um, this um, app. I'm going to click show and this is some this is a, um, a different sort of thing that comes with this. So don't save this. This is not a, this. I don't know what this password is. For my class, the geography class, you will be using ArcMap 10.8, not ArcScene, not ArcGlow, not Arc, well, you may be, depending on the class, use Arc Pro. And, but uh, for 107, it's always Arc Map. Note that you also have access to Excel, um, Word, SPSS, to other um, GIS softwares, and probably several other things, including Word. We're going to launch Arc Map 10.8, which looks like 108. This is prompting us to download an uh, ICA file, an ICA file. And I'm going to click Save. It's going to download here in the corner. And by clicking this, I'm opening this file, .ICA file, with a long, complicated name. But what that tells the, the computer to do is to launch the Citrix app, which allows you at home or on your device to control another computer that is remote. Um, think of it as in a, a computer in the basement of the library at your university and that you're just using your video screen and your keyboard to control another uh, device, another a computer, a PC computer in the basement of the library. So there I go. I launched, I click that, it's now launched the Citrix app. You can see the little icon and the program that it's, it's launching on a remote computer, ArcMap 10.8. I want to permit uh, the application to use the devices. And in a moment, ArcGIS 10.8 will launch. Again, takes about a minute for it to complete the process. And once you've 
installed this, you won't have to reinstall it again on your machine. You're operating tens of thousands of dollars worth of software, uh, perhaps with a little Chromebook that you paid a you know, hundred dollars for. It's the wave of the future. It may be a bit of a pain in the butt, but this is exactly uh, the way um, that modern computing will transpire. Okay, that took um, maybe a minute, minute and a half, a little longer than normal um, because I have uninstalled and reinstalled everything to do this demonstration. Once you get to this point, if you're in my class, click Cancel, click File, Open, click This PC, Permit All Access, click on that, and then scroll down until you see Geog Share H should be nearly the last thing. It's a network location. These other drives are things that are on my local computer, including the um, C drive somewhere. There it is. And that's where I can will save things here. Click, double click on GeogShare H. You're in Geography 107. You may be in one of these other classes. And we'll just show you for Lab 1. Double click. No, we don't want to save changes to the untitled thing. And then uh, you open this. Other labs in this class will begin the tutorial from the point at which the lab uh, you're searching for it and opening it up. This is what lab one will look like. I'm zooming in a little bit here on the screen and uh, then at this point you should switch over to the YouTube video for lab one. Hope this helped. Um, if you have trouble, please see your instructor or consult the help desk at the university library or uh, through helpdesk at csun.edu.